Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's my honor to be here. I know we have an intimate group, so as we highlighted, we are we're welcome to have a, a casual conversation with each other. And know we have some SECO supporters on the call today, so you may be um, aware of everything that's going on with the nuts and bolts of our organization. But please feel free to jump in, have questions. Um, and then we'll highlight kind of the road we're taking as we look forward to taking SECO into the future. Um, but for those who don't know me, my name is Nadia Musharian Binderup, and I am proud to serve as the SECO president. I've been with SECO since um, a year after I started my county career back in 2000, 2011. And so I served as a department representative, kind of like the ambassador at the department level, and just got immersed into the organization through um, various um, ad hoc committees with like um, the bake sales, the breakfast, and then I soon got on board serving as the vice president. Um, and I also served on the allocations committee. So I had a couple terms as vice president. And then as our leadership kind of retired and um, passed on the baton, I became president in 2020, which was great because um, we we're about to, you know, embark on a new vision, you know, we use that 2020 as like this new vision focus for the organization. And then we got side railed like everything else with COVID. And so um, we now have, I took on president for my second term in 2022 with the new executive committee. And so um, I'll highlight that group shortly to you all, but um, I just look forward to the new two years ahead of me and where our team can take the organization, especially as we're trying to pull ourselves from a bit of stagnation that we experienced um, in the past couple of years. So to kick things off, I just wanted to highlight a brief video to give a good capture of um, the services and programs that SECO supports. Um, I'll dive into more of those with the specifics, but this gives a great illustration of the impact we make on the community. families who are dealing with the unimaginable, their child's cancer diagnosis. And we do that by ensuring that no child misses a cancer treatment due to lack of transportation. This year we've traveled over 94,000 miles and provided 3,500 trips for children in San Diego County. Thank you, SECO, for giving our children the fighting chance they deserve. seco has been around since 1956. And since that time, we've given 100% of donations to local nonprofits and county employees who experience a one-time financial crisis. Giving doesn't mean you're making a donation. It means you're making a difference. And that's the charm I love about SECO. Here at the Gary Murray West Senior Dental Center, we help seniors that are vulnerable regain their ability to eat, speak, and smile. Thank you, SECO. A lot of our athletes don't have the same opportunities that you and I may have had. And while we're a serious sports organization, I like to think of what Special Olympics does for our athletes is really more along the lines of developing self-esteem, experiencing joy, finding friendship. And I'd just like to take this opportunity to say thank you to SECO for supporting Special Olympics and supporting our athletes. There is no greater personal satisfaction than when you contribute from your heart and directly see the results of those you helped in the community. Over the last 15 years, I've seen how when we pull all our money together, we could really make a positive impact in our community. All right, so essentially since 1956, that was when SECO was founded based on the grassroots efforts of um, fellow county colleagues such as yourself, you know, now that you're retired, but from that same compassion and willingness to serve our community. Um, so they garnered this organization as a formal nonprofit. And since its inception, we've raised more than $7 million to support local nonprofit organizations by the way of grants to local um, programs, and then we also support county employees and retirees experiencing a one-time financial crisis. So those two programs are essentially um, the, the foundation of how we manage our organization. Um, and really, there's it's very uh, focused just on those two pillars of how we uh, set our, our course and fundraising efforts. 
So as highlighted in the video, SECO is entirely operated by county volunteers. So that essentially makes it unique in that 100% of our, our funds go back out to those grants and uh, mechanisms to support the financial crisis. Um, there's no overhead cost, and I'll get a little bit into the specifics of how we go about the day-by-day -day business matters because we want to make it, our statement true that none of those funds are going to the overhead or administrative uh, business side of things. Um, so like I highlighted, we're a grassroots program, and a lot of this, the the day-to-day -day operations is managed by our core executive committee, but the the big heavy lift is really that foundational base of the grant program. And we have all volunteers. I know we have some attendees on the call who are familiar with our allocations review. Um, so this is the grant committee who looks and goes through so many hundreds of applicants to see who is um, not only deserving, but we try to make it equitable in terms of the distribution of those funds across our region of, and as well as across the different sectors of our populations. Um, and so, again, as part of that effort, we try to hit on the diverse needs of our, our, uh, our region. So as you know, San Diego is very broad in its size, but comes with the unique um, quality of life needs that we try to support our community members. So who represents SECO? At the forefront and really the backbone are um, our supporters such as yourself. And so they are the ones who give us the day-to-day -day ability to support these grants and employees in crisis, and that's through um, being a member is becoming a bi-weekly contributor. So, so those are the active employees who pull from their uh, paychecks on a bi-monthly basis, or they can be a minimum of one-time annual donor of at least $52. And so this was a, these are recent pictures that we were highlighting. I know in um, the ResEC newsletter, we featured SECO in light of National Nonprofit Day. That was on the 17th of this month, but um, we did a promo showing it, give us your hand hearts to show your support for SECO. So these are just some of our, um, uh, the lovely faces of our county colleagues showing their support for our organization. Um, and then before you, here's our executive committee. So I wanna highlight this because we wanna put a face really behind who's running the day-to-day -day, um, operations of the organization. So when I was appointed in 2022, um, we started terms in April. And so our executive committee started at that time as well. We have some familiar faces who we've grown up kind of similar as like a, a department representative and taken on the love of SECO. So we've seen ourselves grow in the different positions. Um, so right now the composition of our our team, um, so I'm with the Sheriff's Department, um, but we have representation in all the different county business groups from Parks and Rec to HHSA. Um, we have SD Sarah. Uh, and so we have, uh, I think, in Child Welfare Services. So I like highlighting the different players to show the diversity of our team, the different life experiences they bring, but also the different experiences they bring from their professional setting, which they can lend themselves into the strategy. The um, We went through a big strategic planning in terms of where we wanna take the organization into the future now that we have our term together. So it was just very helpful to have those different insights to contribute um, towards that collaborative process. And again, so we have our SECO members, but then a big, um, balancing factor is our board of directors. And our board of directors are essentially our department representatives. So these are individuals who've been appointed by their department directors across county departments. And they essentially are there to serve as the ambassadors. So they discuss with their departments, um, they spread the SECO message in terms of who we are, what we do, our mission, but they also do the heavy lifting in terms of getting creative when it comes to fundraising because not only is that bi-weekly one-time donations um, essential to our longevity, but we also do these one-time fundraisers throughout the year and they get very creative in the process um, because some individuals may not have the means to do a consistent donation, uh, but they like contributing at these one-off events, whether it's a bake sale or it's a raffle process. So um, we love to give a kudos to all these players on our board of directors because they do a great job of pushing the name of SECO throughout their department. 
So how is SECO funded? I mentioned about those two um, stability points in terms of the bi-weekly contributors and the one-time donations. Um, but another important process is our sponsorship funds. So um, we lean on SD Sarah. Xerox has been phenomenal in terms of being a wonderful partner for us. Um, this, they give us the ability to print marketing material, um, T-shirts for different fundraiser incentives, and just different outreach tools and swag to help us spread that SECO message out there. Um, so I highlight our sponsorship fund because we have Xerox, we have SC Sarah, we've done um, SCG and Ian Pass have been a great supporter, AIG Direct, but we like to share this because granted everyone's connected in their own respective networks. So if anything comes through, through your respective channels that you think would be a good sponsor that like to benefit local nonprofits, please let us know and we'd be interested in seeing if it's an, uh, an appropriate grant mechanism that would support our marketing efforts um, so we could apply for those opportunities. Um, and this way we can have a broader reach and um, make it more of an incentive. So um, on this screen, in terms of how we give back, this graphic is a, a visual demonstration of some of the creativity we have. And I'll highlight that when it comes to our departmental fundraising efforts. But because of our the money's raised, we're able to fund different tangible items. So it could be emergency um, uh, shelter beds, transitional housing programs, assisting those who are food insecure, um, have medical dental needs, and assisting our youth, whether it's through arts and culture, um, sporting equipment, or just literature and, um, and theater. Um, and so again, it also touches on our employees who are experiencing a financial crisis. So one of the ways we get crafty with our fundraising efforts is um, we are registered through the Secretary of State to uh, offer formal raffles uh, versus an opportunity drawing. Um, this way we can do events like um, this. I think this was for Father's Day. So it was a gas griddle and a nice little barbecue setup that you can see highlighted here. But our departments go and essentially get the funds to purchase these items, and then they do a raffle and um, by selling tickets. And they're a big hit. We've raised more than thousand dollars on different types of events, such as this, where it's a little investment at the beginning, but there's a lot of in the back end in terms of how we're able to uh, raise some funds. And what our department representatives essentially do is um, they have their primary lead themselves and then they go and depending on how large their department is, they establish kind of a SECO committee to help them um, support their outreach efforts and kind of put more of the, the, the um, depending on like HHSA for instance, they can spread their, their education and outreach um, to different channels within their respective departments. So we're, we're so appreciative of their efforts and especially their craftiness when it comes to these different raffle and fundraising efforts. Um, so going back at the start of April, when we were with this new executive committee, we launched a strategic planning group ad hoc committee. Um, as part of that efforts, we surveyed our membership and our board of directors to really glean from them of how is SECO working for you? What resonates with you in terms of other departments that, I mean, sorry, other nonprofits that you support and essentially um, what did we get from that information? And it was that the employee crisis fund was something we've always offered, but it never was elevated to the same level that we would hype up our community grants program. But hearing back from our membership and supporters, the employee crisis fund was right there side by side in terms of the priority of why they support our organization. So that was very insightful for us. And so this year we're planning on really um, educating not only this resource um, to our community, our, our county community, but also to try to raise funds to allocate some more to assist those employees experiencing financial crisis. So again, a portion of the funds that we raise each calendar year, um, we set aside some of those funds to assist employees who are going through this one-time financial crisis. County Department of Human Resources help us, help us with this application process in regards to confirming, yes, they are an employee, they are in good employee status, um, and there are formal questions that we ask of them in terms of what is your, your situation, 
And then they have to provide financial documentation to show that they are one actually in need and they're not taking advantage of this resource. Because we want to make sure, you know, we're protecting the assets, but we're also being able to help them in this fine too. So it's that balance of not being a barrier, but also chewing, uh, uh, confirming the validity of their need. Um, so because of the uh, anonymity behind the application process, not we used to have a crisis fund administrator, um, but when COVID happened, we weren't, knock on wood, doing this is a good thing, we weren't seeing many applications come through through the crisis fund. And we even had a separate COVID relief fund that we did a special one-time fundraiser to bring money in for our county colleagues. But uh, knock on wood, a lot of resources were provided to assist those in need on the county HR side. Um, so we only allocated about four grants based on that relief fund we raised. Um, but the need for our administrator was no longer there and that individual um, ended up um, hanging their hat. And so now it's done exclusively just with our, our two co-treasurers, the president and the vice president. So that way we keep it private to protect the identity of the individual. And then also um, we like to, you'll see in the next slide, we'll, we'd like to highlight their testimony and their impact just so our membership can see how their donations has impacted their lives. Um, so I wanna read this to you because it was, this situation was very impactful. It happened this spring. Um, so this recipient, they, during the start of COVID were hit by the pandemic in terms of loss of job, um, the, the virtual learning for their youth. Um, and then also they were at risk of losing their house. And so this was one of those things where we had to make sure that yes, they made every intentional effort to try to pay the, you know, their banking statements. They've reached out to other programs. So like, you know how there's, uh, depending on some financial assistance programs that are offered, that they try to reach into those efforts too to see if that could assist their needs. So this particular person, they did everything possible to help them save, try to uh, save their house, but they just needed that one little push at the end of the road to get them out of that hole. And that's where SECO came in. So. Um, this individual said, Seiko was there during what was proven to be the worst time of my life. I never would have imagined my husband would lose his job. I would become my nine-year-old's teacher, and I would need to be stronger than ever and conceal my own turmoil while refusing to succumb to the challenge of finding ways to support the community and continue to provide services in a way we've never done before. On top of all the chaos, I had fallen behind on our mortgage and received a notice that we were in jeopardy of losing our home. I struggled to find a way to save it. Then I remembered that when I began working over 20 years ago, I heard about a program that helps people out in emergencies. I did some research and I found SECO. When I reached out to them, I was received with compassion, understanding, and positivity. I finally felt hope, something I had not known for some time. This in itself was a very precious gift. SECO provided assistance I was not able to obtain anywhere else. They helped me with, my, with the arrearage and we are in our home today. SECO is truly a program that helps people. So something like this, this is what pulls at our heartstrings at SECO. Um, just hearing these words, you know, we talk to these individuals, but it's great to be able to share these testimonies to show how this, how your $2 a week or, you know, what, or your purchase of that cupcake at a bake sale can stretch, um, support, and really extend that dollar into something broader to help this individual pull themselves out of this rut that they were in. And so we're so thankful for, for that caring and our, our slogan of lending a hand and how that stretches to support our fellow colleagues. So just wanted to highlight that too for you all. Um, so going back to our annual grants. Um, so this program is very cyclical in nature. Um, the way the SECO calendar works really is come the springtime, we try to have one big fundraiser countywide that people can participate in. So like in the spring, summer, we did a Padres fundraiser. Um, and then come the fall time, it's our big fall campaign push where we try to drive all of our department representatives to do some sort of outreach, whether it's bi-weekly signups or a fundraiser effort. Um, but that's where we really start educating our representatives to advertise that our grants 
are coming to be launched. Um, the application process is um, October, November. And so this is open to all local nonprofits in regards to those requests that fall within a tangible item. And so we share this with not only our, our community, we do a press release, CC, the County Communications Office helps us with that. Um, and then we also ask our membership to spread the word among their respective networks. So I know a lot of our retirees are, they're keeping busy day to day and are well connected to their local community groups. And so this is why I think it's important with our retirees that not only are they able to make a simple donation that can have a broad reach to other nonprofit organizations and make that difference, but they're also able to share with their respective um, community groups that there's this resource out there for tangible items that they may not have known about. And so that's another thing that's great about SECO is we, we support nonprofits that are, fall within the spectrum of, of mom and pop versus something large and sophisticated like the Red Cross or Salvation Army. Um, so we look at that to ensure going back to that equitable disbursement of our funds is this is something that maybe a large grant application would disregard when it's just a simple $100 tangible item need, but that's something these mom and pop nonprofits know SECO is eager and willing to support knowing that it's going to make a, an impact and a far reach on their, their um, community recipients. So going back to our timeline, we have the fall campaign in October, November, and then come the winter months, that's when our allocations committee reviews the hundreds of grants that we receive um, in making the um, recommendations. So come the close of the calendar year, that's when we close our, our budget books. And essentially that's when we find out how much money we're working with. And then once we figure out that money, we adjust um, what we're able to actually allocate. And come March, that's when we have our big annual um, awards distribution event. Um, in the past, it's always been a breakfast. Uh, given SECO, we've done some virtual recognition events and mailed out little um, tokens of like a breakfast um, material items just in, to keep in the spirit of our previous awards breakfast events. But um, we're hoping now that we'll try to get some more in-person um, connections taking place and where we can have that um, interpersonal feel good event where people share where their check is going um, and what's what programming it's gonna essentially support because those are the other feel good moments that we love doing what we're doing because we hear from these groups that we, we are able to impact. So here are just some highlights that we have on social media, um, just talking about what their donations, um, how it's serving their community needs, whether it's um, a stump grinder and aerator for urban core, which allow these individuals to get um, you know, the, the workforce readiness and exposure into different career paths. We fund the hygiene, um, dental hygiene programs with a portable sink, fridge um, for different programs. And like um, we've done homeless shelters and just food banks where they needed um, refrigeration. Um, we do diabetes checks and like I said, sports equipment. So some just great visuals to show where our dollars are stretching. Um, every year, we'd like to highlight through an infographic to be transparent with our membership and supporters about where the dollars are going. So we always encourage individuals to, if you want to be involved in the process and see transparency in action, we encourage you all to join our allocations committee. Um, it's open to all of the CEQA members um, to be part of that. But we'd like to highlight and let them know the, where the grant funds are going based on the population served. Um, the regional breakdown, as well as what type of items we're funding, as you can see in the pie chart there. So um, you can see a lot of our funds go primarily in the central area of our county. Um, I know Kara's uh, on the call and she's been great in trying to get that South Bay presence. And so you can see there, they've been fantastic in educating their local nonprofit networks. So when you see like North Central or East or, uh, you know, we're trying to, to spread the love regionally to make sure we're, we're hitting all pockets of our county uh, region. So last year, um, as you see on this slide, we raised a little over $120,000 that went to assist um, our county nonprofits. And then 
of that nearly 10,000 was allocated to our employee crisis fund. And so sometimes we're asked like, well, what happens if you have a need for the crisis fund and you absorb all that with a, a grant you issued? We have the ability during the year to make a vote through the executive committee um, to vote on an item to reallocate a portion of our funds towards the employee crisis fund to ensure that it's never at zero. Like we can still support those who are actually applying for a need. So here um, is a breakdown. I, um, as part of that infographic I showed in the previous slide, we'll have a, a document that highlights line item, what organization received fund and for what purpose, as well as the amount that was recommended. Um, so this is what we share prior to um, the grant distribution. So come February, when our board of directors meet, we have this shared with our, our supporters, so our members to again, support that transparency effort and let them know this is the recommendations, the allocations committee approved, the executive committee approved, but we wanna make sure that they're aware of their dollars are going. And if they have any questions, they're welcome to reach out to us before it goes before the board of directors for that final approval. So here's a breakdown of some of the funds. You can see it's diverse in terms of all sorts of programs, um, cost amounts, and a lot of, uh, there, there's no real cookie cutter in terms of what's we fund, it's really, what is the need? How many individuals are gonna be impacted by this? Because again, we're trying to make sure that dollar amount stretches to hit as many lives as possible that for, for need and assistance. Um, so there are items that are one and done, like one-time items for one particular event. But um, again, it's, it's not saying that those events won't get funded, but we do kind of spread out the distribution for different needs. So here's some more. So we have like Living Coast Discovery Center. Um, we have the large, you know, Jacobs and Cushman Food Bank. Um, but then we have NAMI, we have Promises to Kids, um, Refugee for Women, Refuge for Women. So um, a, there's always that balance of technology too, to assist, not just the, like the consumables as well. But this is all on our website, sdcco.org, um, and we always highlight at the bottom of that document the total funds and then the final total, including our um, employee crisis fund allocation, and then the breakdown of programs and then agencies. So there's going to be a different number here because each nonprofit is eligible to apply for two grants with a max rate of $5,000. So um, you know, they're more than welcome to issue two separate grants maxed out at 5k but that's where they have to strategize in terms of knowing our funds are essentially limited and we get hundreds of applications what's going to be a practical ask of our grant um, solicitation so historically here um unfortunately this is kind of the the downer slide literally um, in 2017, you know, and when I started in 2011, we were distributing annually in the $200,000 range. We were doing fantastic in terms of what we were raising. But as the years went on and we're seeing more individuals um, leave through retirements, we were just starting to drop in terms of the trends of what we were able to raise through that, um, that stability point of the biweekly uh, paycheck deduction. Because, um, like I said, that's the foundation of our funding source and the retiree donations. Um, so we, we we're on that little slow trajectory downward. Um, and this membership, these are the biweekly signups, as well as our retirees. So it's moving downward. And unfortunately, for this year, we are at 884 of 884 members. Um, so. Um, if you're, I'm sure you're all following along in terms of how each year the county is growing significantly in terms of its staffing. So we're at like 20,000 plus employees. When you look at this ratio, that's less than 5% of our workforce. And then um, recently, SD Sarah was um, assisting us with our retiree uh, signups. 
through the earnings statements, individuals were able to support SECO on a consistent basis and they would just pull directly from their statements. Um, however, there was a, a transition. And so now SECO is no longer being administered through SD SARA and now we're doing it independently. Um, so we have different mechanisms for retirees to sign up, but in that transition, we were at 35 and now we just have 10. So we had 10 folks come back in and sign up through our different um, contribution mechanisms, but we still have to reach out to expand that reach. Um, and that way we would be so gracious for their continued support. So the ways that we can have individual support is through not only the biweekly uh, paycheck, but I know that's not an option for our retirees, but we did create, we, as part of our strategic planning efforts this year, we went a little bit more uh, technologically savvy and, and modern with the times, you know, and so we created a donation platform. So we have a special link, which is this top one with the heart in the center um, that is specific to identify just those who are retired that are contributing. Um, this platform has fees and charges associated with it. The individual can deny those charges or uh, be willing to accept those. It allows reoccurring. So if you want to do it monthly, quarterly, um, it gives you that option. Another funding source that we have is through PayPal Giving Fund. Um, this is the QR code here. Um, this allows individuals to, again, donate through a, a funding app. Um, there are no fees associated with this link or QR code. Um, however, we do ask, the way it works is I think it automatically makes you an anonymous donor unless you select the box that you'd like to be, um, you're open to sharing your name and email address. So that way we are able to have a, um, a tracking mechanism to show that you are a retiree assisting us. Another source that individuals uh, support is through Amazon. So I'm not sure how many Amazon shoppers we have on the call, but if you go through their website and register it through Amazon Smile and select SECO as your nonprofit of choice, anytime you make an Amazon purchase and you have SECO as your selected organization, we'll get 0.5% of uh, eligible purchases will be donated to SECO. Um, and so it may not sound a lot like it's a lot that could be generated, but I will tell you, we have a lot of shoppers. And so I am one of those people where in the end, each month we get about two to, two to $300 um, from Amazon issuing to Seco based on all those purchases where people sign up to, to have Seco as their, their charity benefit from the program. And then lastly, um, we never disregard our cash or check uh, mailings and so, we use our headquarters under the CAO's office. Um, our CAO, Helen Robbins-Meyer, has been such an avid supporter and a true, true backer of our organization. And so she does what she can to support us. Um, and through that, she allows different resources. Like I mentioned, um, having us use County Communications Office gives us visibility at her leadership team meetings to make presentations to County Department directors for different outreach and and fundraising efforts, and as well as letting us um, partner with her office to be our, our headquarters, essentially. Um, but I think not this past Christmas, a year before, what was 2020, she, as part of her holiday uh, fundraiser with her executives, they picked SECO as their nonprofit to benefit that year. So it was um, fantastic. So that wraps up my presentation. Um, I'm open to any questions. I know many of you are um, familiar with SECO, but anything in terms of your interest that you'd like to, to ask or I'm all yours. I don't have a question, but we just had somebody come into the room, <laughs> right? As you were oh. saying, the presentation's over. So I'll, I'll let Helen in and let her know she'll be able to watch it again okay. uh, when she comes in. Unless she has a burning question, she's more than welcome to ask. That's right. <laughs> we'll welcome, start it all Helen. over for her. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Helen. I just want to say uh, thank you. I've oh, got to jump you. off, so I apologize here. Um, I've got to leave, but Niadi, I thought that was great. And you have some information there that we can pass out to more retirees because 
we really need to get those retirees. And so, you know, I want to do whatever we can to get them. If anybody else has ideas, that's great. But thank you. Yeah, and, thank and you. Chair, if I can also mention, because um, I'm going to let folks know um, as well, um, we do have, we are going to have a, a annual health fair picnic this year. We haven't had it in two years and SECO is going to have a booth there as well. Um, so I'm going to show, um, actually, if you don't mind, um, Nadi, if you can um, stop sharing, I'll share and maybe um, you can at least see it, um, Kara, before you go. Let's see. So this is our homepage, news and events. You just click on ResDeck events. There's uh, Nadia's presentation. Uh, tomorrow we'll be having another presentation with Elder Health at 10 o'clock, same time, um, with uh, Carrie McMullen from Elder Health. Uh, so we did a little back-to-back -back, uh, presentations this week. Then we're gonna have a ResDeck Roundup, otherwise known as Happy Hour, um, <laughs> with, for our members down in the South Bay. We did one earlier in the year out in uh, East County. It, it actually turned out, we had a really good turnout. So this one will be at the uh, galley at the marina. Is the happy hour going to be outside? It is. It's gonna. That's one of the reasons we picked um, the galley because they have an outdoor patio, and we've been there before. It worked out pretty good. I just, I just go a little early, Mary, and I, I stake out like four or five tables <laughs> on the patio. Uh, Day at the Padres is uh, September twenty second. A few tickets remaining, uh, and then we're gonna participate in the Walk for Alzheimer's uh, in mid October. Oh. You know what? It's not up yet, but you're, I'm telling you all, mark your calendars <laughs> for Wednesday, October 26th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Admiral Baker Field, our usual spot. It will be our annual health fair picnic. It's going to be a little different this year, um, and you'll be hearing about this and seeing it in the um, newsletter that's coming out, the September newsletter via email and um, snail mail. Um, there are all the details there. This year, it's going to be a free event for members and their guests but it's going to be smaller scale um, because of some restrictions that are in place at uh, Admiral Baker. We're, only, we're going to only have 150 people uh, limited to that amount. Um, and we're going to have vendor booths um, like SECO, but we're, they won't let us have any more than 10. So we're going to prioritize which vendor booths we're going to get there. But Wednesday, October 26th is when the actual health care picnic will be and more details to come. And that will, the board actually, our board, uh, approved a uh, us subsidizing this event. So in past years, we've had the members free, their guests, we made them pay. It's a little bit administratively funky. So we, we just said, uh, let's go ahead and just subsidize this event for our members. And it's the first time we've done it in two years. And uh, so, and Helen, I'm so sorry. As soon as you entered the room, <laughs> Nadia had finished her presentation. <laughs> Believe it or not, I had some terrible trouble. I've been trying to st start my computer properly oh. in the last hour. No problem. The good news for you is I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, oh, thank you, Kara. Um, we'll see you later. Uh, Bye, Kara. So back to our, our ResDeck page. So if you go to, uh, you can do here, let's go home to the home page. So this is the home page. It's going to come up here in a second. Right down on the left-hand side, you'll see these buttons. There's yes. one that says yes. ResDeck yes. YouTube. Click on ResDeck YouTube. And this is our YouTube page. So you'll actually we record our presentations and then we post them. So in a couple of days, two to three days, this presentation that Nadia just presented will be um, posted on the ResDeck YouTube channel. Um, so check it out there uh, if you have a chance. Um, and then I, I didn't have any other questions if anybody else did for Nadia. No, and I'm just gonna drop in the chat box our email address in case anybody has questions or wants to get in touch. Um, you're more than welcome to email that address and. That way um, we can answer any questions you have or membership um, ways you can support the organization. Be more than happy to help with that. And then here's your here's your homepage too. There's Miss Kara. There's Kara. <laughs> <There's Kara. laughs> um, and then Nadia, if you don't mind, uh, once I uh, uh, finish the session here in a second, can you stay on? Because I, I had a question for you about our sure. upcoming health fair that I just mentioned. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's SECO's website, sdceco.org, uh, I think is what you can yes. actually ask that way. Mm -hmm. Um, so check that out as well, if you have a chance. Uh, anything else from the, uh, from our friends in yeah. the audience? Oh, no. Go ahead, go ahead, Helen. Two things is one, I do have a, 
YouTube site and um, I, some speeches I've given in Toastmasters, they're poor, they're videos, they're not the greatest, you know, made for Academy Awards, but I gave an amusing speech once about coordinating weddings called Ring Bearer's Revenge. So when you have nothing else to do, you can click actually two ways, because I also have a website named HelenAntoniak.com, but I, I'm kind of proud of Ring Bearer's Revenge for my 14 years of coordinating weddings. But also, if you really want to see something fun, my daughter's an artist. And if you just feed in, you don't even have to say YouTube, just say Draw My Life, short story of Annie, A-N-N-I-E. And she's got a whiteboard and a marker, and she gives this exaggerated story of how we got our first dog. So oh, nice. since you're talking about YouTube, I think YouTube is kind of amazing. It really is. And I, I uh, applaud you as a former um, alum of Toastmasters myself. So. Although that the first speech I had to give was the scariest thing because you know you have to talk about yourself, <laughs> but Toastmasters yeah. is a great organization. And and also um, you make friends that way because I have absolutely. made some good friends in Toastmasters because in a short yeah. period of time they tell you about themselves. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, if there's nothing else, um, no, once there, again. There, uh, oh, sorry, little... Mary. Mary, <laughs> yeah. you had something. I Apologies. have I have a lot of things, but I don't want them recorded because I've. Oh. I've um, well, then I'm going to stop the recording now and thank you all for joining us. And, uh, and uh, does we'll... Betty have any questions?